Hi everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to use the beam interface in COMSOL to compute the bending moments and stresses in beams without the need to build the entire beam geometry. So to solve the example shown on the screen, you would need a 2D uh, geometry component, the beam interface which can be found under structural mechanics, and a stationary solver. The geometry is very simple. Uh, I will create five segments. Each one has a length of one meter. Uh, that's all we need to insert all the physics. So the first segment, and then I will copy it five times. Under materials, we will use only one material. Go to building components, let's assign aluminum. All the properties are already defined. And now we can go to the physics. So under the physics, we have the left end is fixed. So under physics, go to points and then insert a fixed constraint. And the right end is pinned, so we can insert a pin constraint, which means translation is not allowed, but rotation is allowed if the, uh, if the point is uh, pinned. And we have two rolling constraints here. So no vertical displacement is allowed. So under points, you can insert prescribed displacement. Select the two points. And under displacement in y direction, set it to prescribed and let the value be zero. Rotation will be allowed, so you don't have to check on prescribed rotation. And now we need to insert the loads. So first, uh, we have a one kilonewton load pointing in the uh, vertical direction downwards and a one kilonewton meter uh, couple moment. So under points, go to point load select the point and then define the value of the force and the value of the moment the moment is counterclockwise so insert a positive value if it's if the moment is in the clockwise direction you need to insert a, define a negative value and finally for the distributed load we need to define a function so under global definitions, you, go, you can go to functions. For some reason, it's not loading. OK. Select piecewise. You can also select analytic, but piecewise is more convenient in this case. The input argument is uh, x you can so this is a dummy variable you can change it to anything you want and since the uh, distributed load will be acting on the middle segment from zero to two the force should be zero and then from two to three we need to define a linear function so from the diagram, you can see there is a the linear function has a slope of four. It starts at three kilonewtons per meter and it ends at seven kilonewtons per meter. So in this case, the linear function will be four times x minus two plus three. And then for the remaining segments, there is no load. The input units will be meter and the output will be in kilonewtons. Let's name the function P. The function name should be called in the physics 
And to make sure that the function is uh, constructed properly, as I was thinking, you can plot it. So you can see this will be the distributed load. Uh, of course, we will add a negative sign in the physics because it will be pointing downwards. Go back to the physics and under boundaries, select edge load and select the middle segment. You can in, in fact select all the segments because with the piecewise function, we have defined the force to be zero from zero to two meters and three meters to five meters. So even if you select all of them, it won't make a difference. The moment is zero and the force will be negative P of X. Yeah, it's the distributed load is kilonewtons per meter. So yeah, in the function, we need to define the correct units. Okay, x in this case is the spatial variable, which represents the uh, the value of the x coordinate uh, in, the, in the x coordinate axis. So although in the piecewise function, the input argument is x, here x is a dummy variable. In fact, in the physics, if you have, let's say, a 3D geometry, you can insert x, y, z, or even time t. In this case, we only have one axis, which is the x-axis, so that will be the input variable. And then go to mesh and click on build all. Now, since we have distributed load, we need to increase the number of mesh elements in the middle segment. So we will make the mesh finer. If only point loads are used, then one mesh element per uh, segment is enough. And then click on compute. The simulation is uh, will be completed relatively very quickly because there is only a few degrees of freedom. And the plots will be generated automatically. So you can see uh, the von Mises stress distribution in the beam. And you can even look at the moments, the shear forces, and the axial forces. The axial forces is zero in this case. So that's all for the beam interface. So uh, if you have a complex beam structure and you are um, you don't want to build the entire 3D or 2D geometry, you can use the beam interface, which is also applicable in 3D. Uh, you can only insert the line segments, and and yeah, it will give you all the uh, uh, qu physical quantities. Last thing I want to mention regarding the cross-sectional data. In this case, we uh, use the default values for the area and moment of inertia. If, however, the cross-sectional value, if the cross-section has another shape or a specific shape and you want to specify the dimensions of that shape, COMSOL allows you to do that. All you have to do is change the cross-section definition, select common sections, and under section type, you can select several predefined uh, cross sections. So let's say if you have an H profile, which is very common, you can uh, specify the dimensions and the thickness. And that will basically be the cross section of the beam. So from this, COMSOL will automatically calculate the cross-sectional area and the moment of inertia, and it will give you the results. So the beam interface is very simple. If, uh, if, you, don't have, uh, if you don't want to compute something other than moments and stresses, then using the beam interface is a very quick shortcut, and it saves a lot of time and effort in comparison with building the entire geometry. So that's all for the uh, for this tutorial. Thanks you thank you for watching.